Straight from the heart of Croatia, I'm Abby Knight, and I'm going to tell you why the heart is so important to this beautiful country. I'm Mallory Cunningham, and we've got the Croatian origin of the necktie and why it's important to people everywhere. I'm Marissa Steinberg. We've got the story about one sport you won't find in East Tennessee. All of these stories and more coming up on UT Today. to UT today, we have a very special episode for you. I'm Mallory Cunningham. I'm Marissa Steinberg. I'm Abby Knight. And I'm Jackie Del Pilar. Thanks for joining us. The FERP has traveled abroad to Croatia in an exchange program in March. This was funded by the U.S. Embassy and we were spending time at the University of Zagreb. Back in October, the University of Zagreb students came to Tennessee to learn a little bit about how we do things. So now this was our turn to go abroad and exchange ideas and learn about reporting internationally. We spent two weeks exploring the city, meeting locals, and eating a lot. What was your favorite part, Abby? Well, my favorite part is they took us all around the beautiful country. So we didn't just experience Zagreb, we experienced so many different parts, and we got to go to the coastline, and it was so beautiful. What about you, Marissa? Um, I would have to say getting to meet different people from all over the world. It's really crazy to think how you can travel thousands of miles and still have those connections with people that you meet yeah. for 10 minutes on this train, tram, university. It was a great experience and it was really cool working with the students from the University of Zagreb. They're awesome and it's really great to work with different people that you would never have the chance to. Mallory, what about you? Well, I think for me it was the challenges we had to face because mm -hmm. if you think about it, um, we put together so many stories to present for people here in Tennessee and we spent hours in this editing room, you know, working with different technology that was really hard. It's something that's probably going to bond us for the rest of our lives. And it wasn't exactly the stuff that was the most fun, but it was the most rewarding at the end of the day, learning everything that we did in that short amount of time. Absolutely. And one thing that you guys should know about the University of Zagreb is that it's the only school in the entire country in Croatia that has a journalism program. So it was really great for us to see how other schools do it, especially in other countries. Yeah, and it was really interesting because they have their own student-run television station just like we do here in Knoxville. So it was interesting to really compare how they run theirs and how we run ours. And it was a great learning experience for both parties involved. And there was a lot of similarities. Sure. So it was definitely was a take from and a give back kind of thing, you mm -hmm. know? Absolutely. And also we can all agree that the food was amazing. It was. Yes. Yes, yes. I think it was Marissa's favorite part. It was. It was. <laughs> we had our favorite bakery, which was right across the street from our hotel, and we went probably five times <laughs> in five days. It was great. It was very great, and the sandwiches were amazing. The breads were great. I could still eat but it probably. Those what pastries. What was your favorite sandwich, Marissa? I had a favorite sandwich, and it was actually the tuna fish sandwich. So. It was great. Well, I think we can all agree that our time there was definitely well spent and we want to share our trip with you. This episode of UT Today documents our adventures. We hope we can teach you a lot about this beautiful country and maybe fall in love with it like we did. Croatia is peaceful today. It hasn't always been this way. Just over 20 years ago, Croatia was fighting for their independence. Our group toured the Serbian-Croatian border to learn more about Croatia's journey to freedom. Over 20 years have passed since the Croatian War of Independence, but the painful memory remains. In 1991, Croatia declared its independence from Yugoslavia. Croatia was Yugoslavia's crown jewel of states and didn't want to lose their contribution to the economy. Serbia and Croatia battled for four years. 15,000 deaths later, Croatia emerged victoriously, achieving independence and preservation of its borders. Alenka Mirkovic, the director of the Memorial Center in Bukovar, says she wants Americans to know the significance of the Croatian War. We would like to um, make you understand that for us this independence was as important as it was your war for independence, although it was very, very long time ago. And that um, we uh, actually get ourselves in that situation because we wanted things that you take for granted. The first big battle of the war was fought here in Vukovar, the border between Croatia and Serbia. Over 2,000 Croatians were killed in this city alone. I'm standing here at the Danube River, which is the border between Croatia and Serbia. 
Though the armed conflict is long over, there is still tension between Serbs and Croats living in Vukovar. More than one-third of Vukovar's population consists of Serbians, so public buildings are required by law to post signs in two ways, Latin for Croatians and Cyrillic for Serbians. HRT reporter Stella Sepp says that this has caused distress among Croatians, who often tear down these signs that bring back painful memories. Younger people are trying to live normal, but the older people are still wounded, they are still suffering. Those uh, war memories are still fresh and they can't forget. They can forgive, but they can't forget. Though the city is a symbol of war, Vukovar, Croatia is also a beacon of hope. For UT Today, on location in Croatia, I'm Jackie Del Pilar. After spending some time at the University of Zagreb, I took a look at how an extra year of education is affecting Croatian students. A university degree in the United States usually takes most students four years, and students often pay for the education themselves. However, this is not the case in Croatia. Her voice, Ivanovic, is a grad student at the University of Massachusetts, as well as a professor of political science at the University of Zagreb, and has experienced the educational differences firsthand. In America, people the people try to, to to the professors try to 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 train students to read more, to 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 have this type of schedule. The approach to teaching is only one of the many educational differences between the two countries. Professor Zavanovich also says that U.S. university students feel like they deserve to be there. In Croatia, students go to college for three plus two years or four plus one, equaling five years in school, while Americans just go four. Nicola Simic participated in an exchange program with the University of Tennessee and understands why students in Croatia get a bachelor's degree in three years instead of four. We study three years in undergraduate and uh, after that we get a bachelor's degree, uh, which, which means that uh, three years in Europe are exactly the same as four years in the States and the other two years, our graduate program. Simic also says that almost all students in journalism go on to complete a master's degree, which is different than it is in the United States. He also noticed some other differences. I, mean, I think, but I think you have more content in the uh, university. You have uh, more equipment, for example, which is very important in journalism. You have uh, better uh, facilities and such. While University of Zagreb is now located in a number of buildings across the city, plans have been announced to build a new campus. While there are differences between the American and Croatian system of higher education, Professor Savanovic likes the Croatian system because... It's free and it's good. Reporting for UT Today on location in Croatia, I'm Abby Knight. Croatia is known for many things and many people, including a Wimbledon champion, an Olympic gold medalist, and a two-time Academy Award-winning film producer. Mallory Cunningham explores the connection between Croatia and Hollywood. The Oscar for the Best Picture of 1993 goes to Schindler's List. Steven Spielberg, Gerald Molin, and Branko Luswick producers. My number was A3317. I'm a Holocaust survivor. It's a long way from Auschwitz to this stage. I want to thank everyone who helped me to come so far. People died in front of me at the camps. The last words were, be a witness of my murder. Tell to the world how I died. Remember. Together with Jerry, by helping Steven to make this movie, I hope I fulfill my obligation to the innocent victims of the Holocaust. In the name of the six million Jews killed in the Shoah and other Nazi victims, I want to thank everyone who acknowledged this movie. Thank you. 
I wanted to talk about Schindler's List for a little bit. How did your experience in Auschwitz come into play when you were producing that film? It was really difficult, actually, but uh, <clears throat> we prepared very well when the little kids coming out and are put on the, they are put on the trucks and taken away and the mothers are running after them. I start to cry in the middle of the set. The first time happened. And then Steven came to me and took me away. And you know where he put me? It's his mother. Mm -hmm. That was one of the nice remembrances. Absolutely. Now, watching the New York Times video of you returning, why was that important to you to go back there? Look, I was 10 years old when I was in Auschwitz. Nobody can tell me that I remembered everything <clears throat> now, what happened then, because it's impossible. I have some flash memory. But uh, important was that I, for, for the generation that come, they came there, I will be there. One final question for you. Um, when people think of you years from now, what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want to leave here? What do you want people to think of? What I want people to say? Yeah. We will never forget it. The story what Mr. Lustig told us, we will always remember. But you see, you should not always remember. You cannot think always of this. But in a moment, when something happened, what can bring that this happened, then you should remember and say, stop, no. We'll not do it. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. You're fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. If it's European, then it's European. <laughs> <laughs> Since moving back to Croatia, Lustig says he visits Charlie's Coffee Shop almost every day. Drinking coffee is an important part of Croatian culture. I experienced firsthand what it means to drink coffee in Zagreb. If you're looking for a venti ice mocha with soy in Croatia, think again. There are over 1,000 coffee shops in Zagreb, but you won't find a Starbucks anywhere. Drinking coffee in Croatia is not about getting a quick fix of caffeine to go. It's a cherished social event that almost everyone makes time for. Uh, drinking the coffee is not about coffee at all, it's about people you are drinking it, so it's kind of uh, Socializing. Here in Croatia, it's common culture to sit on a patio for hours, sipping on just one cup of coffee. So what you think is a quick coffee between friends turns into a two-hour long event. Cody Brown is an American who now lives permanently in Croatia. He's a professor at the University of Zagreb, and his blog comparing Croatian and American culture has gone viral. Having coffee here is basically the arena that all relationships or transactions take place. Whereas in America, like really we drink coffee like cars use gasoline. I mean, it's really just something we use to, to stay awake, to work faster, you know, to, to not be tired at three o'clock in the afternoon. Cody says what started as a strange clash of cultures has now become a way of life. And just, yeah, just being able to sit and be somewhere for an hour with friends and you don't have to worry about food, you don't have to worry about providing something, you don't have to worry about time, you just, you just get to be. I mean, to me, it's almost like Croatian's psychiatry couch, like, you know, it's like where they just convent and talk and be social. And at the price equivalency at less than $3 per cup, it's the cheapest and most genuine therapy there is. In Zagreb, Croatia, this is Jackie Del Pilar. A famous Croatian symbol is worn all over the world, but many people don't know where it originated. Mallory Cunningham has the story of how the necktie got its start. You can find a man wearing a tie every day, but if you were asked where the tie originated, would you know the answer? Here at Croata in Zagreb, I found out where this famous accessory came from. A love story, oddly enough, is where the idea of the tie first began. In the 1920s, Croatia was a royal territory with little resources. Women used their scarves as a symbol of their love and engagement by wrapping them around the neck of their lover. Croata spokesperson Riyad Rik Jakupovic says the necktie has evolved over time to what we see today. Basically, uh, what the necktie is, is a symbol, you know, like uh, what you're trying to say about yourself to you know the rest of the world. Actually, like um, like 
see what type of a, like a personality that person has just by the, the selection of the tie. Rick says it was the French royalty that first discovered ties from Croatia and began wearing them around Paris. And now on October 18th, Croatia commemorates a day each year to pay tribute to the tie. It all started uh, a couple of years ago, and we did the tie around the arena mm -hmm. in Pula. Now, Croatian ties are found around the world. Jakubovic says, though, what makes the tie important to Croatia is its traditions. But he also shares words from a famous author summing up why it's important everywhere. Uh, I think it was Oscar Wilde who said that uh, a boy becomes a man uh, the first time he ties his first tie. Thank you. <laughs> and I even bought one for my dad. In Croatia for UT Today, I'm Mallory Cunningham. Welcome back. In America, when people think of handball, many might think of racquetball or even rugby. But in Croatia, handball is an icon of professional athletics. Two-time Olympic champions, Croatia has a long-standing history of handball. But it's not the same handball we play in America. It might look a little bit like basketball and a bit like soccer. Basic rules of handball follow suit with the basic rules of basic American basketball. There are six players and one goalkeeper on each team during the match. Each player can take three steps and then pass or shoot. In order to take a shot on goal, you must jump out of the six meter space. With handball being one of the most famous sports in Croatia, I decided to give it a try. And let me tell you, it's a lot harder than it looks. Here's my best move. Croatian players are very passionate about handball across the country. Junior player Marko Šehić talks about what this sport means to him. It's, a, it's passion. It's a passion in the game. I like I like to play the games. I love to train. Uh, winning. Not only are Croatian handball players successful on the court, but they are also very popular off the court. Girls like handball players a lot. I think they're gentlemen and they're a little bit uh, different than the soccer players. There. Handball is played all over Europe and the players hope to spread the influence across the world, including Tennessee. Reporting for UT Today on location in Croatia, I'm Marissa Steinberg. Another unique aspect of the Croatian sports culture is high school athletics. Many potential professional athletes attend a different kind of high school than one you might find in East Tennessee. Marino Merlik is a student and professional volleyball player who also attends a one-of-a-kind sports high school in Zagreb. The school is home to some of Croatia's most promising athletes. The primary focus of the school is allowing their students a large amount of time for sports training while in high school. For me to spend in the school and this school tolerates the sport and the sport tolerates the school this way so uh, when I'm better in school I'm better in sport, when I was better in sport I'm better in school and the knowledge is the same so. Teachers and faculty are on board with the program and help students organize their studies while teaching them the importance of time management. Sports psychologist Anna Guchkot-Smith says the structured mix of academics and athletics is a real advantage. The main goal uh, of our school is to make a um, community for young kids that don't have much time so they can um, enroll in their uh, sports and in school as much as they can. And uh, we are trying to manage their time. That's the main goal of this school. Students here have been very successful while playing for sports high school. The high school sports concept clearly works, as seen by the countless alumni that I've medaled in the Olympic Games. Marino also says there are benefits to going to school with all athletes. The best part is that we're all athletes and we support each other. We understand each other when someone goes down, when we have a crisis and we help each other. 
And I think that's the point of this school. The school hopes to keep their tradition of success in the next Olympic Games. Reporting for UT Today on location in Croatia, I'm Marissa Steinberg. From March Madness to college football, collegiate sports dominate American culture. But at the University of Zagreb, sports play a very limited role in students' lives. Water polo, basketball, handball, and judo are all college sports that are played at the University of Zagreb in Croatia. Although there are 28 different sports teams at the university, lack of facilities and monetary funds are at an all-time low. Jelena Bagarik is a student at the university and a former athlete. She says collegiate sports are unpopular in Croatia. Student athletics in Croatia is not so popular because the infrastructure, the gyms, the pools, everything is in a really bad condition and stu students do not have a place to train, to practice their skills. Athletes at the university play these sports with no daily practices and often just play for fun and friendship. Water polo player Luka Strosera says that it is difficult to compare Croatian collision sports with American. You watch movies and in America there are all those people in the stadium and they are supporting their sports team. And well, here in Croatia, people don't know you have a sports team. And it's very sad. The University of Tennessee, attendance can reach over 100,000, while attendance at collision events in Croatia rarely tops 50. Jelena is optimistic that the athletic programs at the University of Zagreb can make improvements to the sports environment. Uh, I think that it can never be like in the United States, but it can improve. They can give them some gyms that will be only for them. Reporting for UT Today on location in Croatia, I'm Marissa Steinberg. Professional sports continue to have a large impact on Croatian culture as they continue to achieve success all over the world. But when you visit, sports might not be the first thing you notice. Mallory Cunningham tells us more about these unique features. Welcome back to UT Today. Not even I can resist the temptation to enter one of Croatia's numerous bakeries, but I did find out why this bakery culture is much different than America. Arrive in Croatia and you will soak in the busy streets, beautiful architecture, and smells on every corner. Just turn down any road and you'll find a bakery, a bakery, a bakery, oh yeah, and another bakery. Legend has it there are five bakeries for every person in Croatia. People here cannot seem to get enough of these fresh baked goods. The Croatian custom with bakeries is similar to fast food in America. It's quick, easy, and delicious. But the big difference is all in the process. Meet Chazim Samahode. He arrives three hours before his shift begins to prepare the dough. That's at midnight. Then at 3 a.m., the real baking begins. I love to bake all kinds and I don't have one that's my favorite. We do it with love because we want to be the best. For most Croats, the bakeries are about feeding their hunger. For him, it's much more. People are opening bakeries even if they don't know how to bake. It's a family dynasty. My grandfather did it, my father did it, I do it. And back here is just the beginning. At 6 a.m., that's when the fun really begins. For most college students, eating at 2 a.m. is common. But it's usually not bread. Young Croatians will often stay out until early morning, from 2 to even 6 a.m. That's everything we eat all day. And the last thing they want before they head home is a piece of that bakery bread. They are all, on every corner, so uh, there are a lot of them. So uh, it's, I think it's the easiest way to eat. In Croatia for UT Today, I'm Mallory Cunningham. The heart is typically known as a representation of love everywhere. But Abby Knight tells us why the heart in Croatia means a little bit more. Love is patient, love is kind, and so is the process of making the Croatian heart. One of the first things the tourists in Croatia will see is a warm red heart. The Lisitar, as it's called, dates back to the Middle Ages. 
The warm heart is a symbol of Croatia, but many people don't know the history behind it. However, there seems to be many hearts around us. I went in to find out more information about the history behind the heart. Marina Zabic is a student and part-time employee. When, when a young boy had a love for one girl, he said, look, this is my heart, you know, on my hand. And it was something like this. This is like a crucial story about this warm heart. The tradition of the heart continues today as a symbol of Croatia. And this was something like people, you know, uh, had a value for that pressure life and everything. And it just becomes a symbol, like symbol of love, of honesty and friendship and everything. Techniques for creating the heart differ around the country, but one thing stays the same, the mirror. This mirror, you know, uh, means like there was like prestige and something that if the boy give the girl heart with the mirror, it was mean like that this girl means so much to him and he wants to ha uh, get, uh, give it to her and have her back, her love. Straight from the heart of Croatia, this is Abby Knight reporting for UT Today. There are a lot of warm hearts in Croatia, but there are some broken ones too. Jackie Del Pilar takes us to a unique museum to show us about love and love lost. They say Paris is the city of love, and by the looks of it, Zagreb, Croatia is a close second. Whether they're holding hands or snuggling in the park, young Croats are not shy about showing the world that they're in love. We are together for a year and a half, and uh, it's great. It's a funny story, actually. I was in a club with another girl, and she spilled my drink. The Fence of Love in Zagreb, Croatia is a place where couples can come and hang a padlock to lock in their eternal love. But what you wouldn't expect is that just around the corner is a museum for breakups. The Museum of Broken Relationships is a place for objects of lost love to find a new home. Like an old country song, each object has its own story of love gone wrong. Ivana Drusetic, the collection manager of the museum, says it's a therapeutic way for exes to mend a broken heart. The act of donating their objects to this museum is very important to them and they would like to know uh, if their object travels, they would like to get a photo of it, you know, it's to, um, to symbolically uh, finish their relationship with the object and with the memory connected with the object. What started as a small art project has grown into a permanent museum. Traveling exhibits have visited over 27 countries, with five of those stops in the U.S. Although the pieces on display are from all over the world, one must wonder which crazy in love Croat will be the next donor. From Zagreb, Croatia, this is Jackie Del Pilar. Thanks for watching UT Today on location in Croatia. I'm Jackie Del Pilar. I'm Abby Knight. I'm Marissa Steinberg. And I'm Mallory Cunningham. We hope you have a happy Easter.